You're listening to Two Smart Assets with Chris Thompson and Danny Nichols. This is your source for passive investing and real estate syndications. It's time for us to gain knowledge and take action. So let's go. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. This is the Two Smart Assets podcast. I'm your host, Danny Nichols, here with the one, the only, Chris Thompson. Chris, what's up, man? How you doing, man? You know what I just thought about just by saying that? The one and the only Chris Thompson? We have pretty generic names. Pretty average, yeah. Generic. How many Chris Thompsons do you think there are out there? I don't know. I went to school with uh, a couple. My middle name's Scott, and I know Christopher Scott Smith, Christopher Scott Turner. Really? Yeah. Listen, if there are any Chris Thompsons out there listening to the show, hit us up. We want to hear from you straight away. <laughs> it, beyond this one, if there is some, you, you don't count, you can't call in, you know. So if there's any other Chris Thompsons out there, please drop us a line, twosmartisons.com. Go to the contact us page. Speaking of that, before we get started on the show, listeners, please go to twosmartassets.com. If you're a passive investor and you're looking to get some more information, we have some great resources for you there on our website. Um, you can get a, our passive guide to investing in apartment syndications. If you're looking to get into apartment syndication investing as a passive investor, this is going to be the groundwork for you to get started. This is going to provide you with a lot of great information, a lot of great tips, what to look for, what to watch out for, and the type of... Um, what would you say resource that really you can refer back to again and again when you're getting started yep. with this uh, another thing we have is our sample deal um we put together a sample deal for basically just for you to look over and kind of understand what you're going to get from an operator when you're going potentially when they have a deal come up right so they're gonna be like hey we have a deal you already signed up to our investor list here's xyz all this this information executive summary um blah 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 so it's going to be a lot of stuff in there it's basically just a, just exactly what you're going to see from a sponsor. So it's really going to get you familiar with what you're looking at, the numbers, and all that stuff. So after you look at these resources, if you have any questions or comments or anything, hit us up. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, contact us page, twosmartassets.com. Go in there, drop us a line, or you can find us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Go on there. You can send us a message on there, or you can leave a comment on one of our posts. We're posting stuff. Really, every day. Mm -hmm. So go on there, leave us some, leave us some, some good stuff there, and we'll be happy, obviously, to reply uh, as soon as we can. So we look, we we're really looking to connect with as many people as possible uh, that are really trying to, you know, better themselves through um, financial freedom or really just investing in general. So uh, also, if you're a big fan of the show or just a fan in general, really, please, please, please head over to iTunes and leave us a rating and written review. Uh, this really helps us uh, reach uh, more like-minded. Uh, individuals, investors who could really benefit from this type of information. I know that's how we got started. So if you could go to iTunes, leave us a rating and written review. We'd really appreciate it. All right. So today's episode. What is it? What are we going to discuss, Chris? Wait, I'll tell you. We're going to discuss basically like the metrics. Well, let's see. Some important metrics when it comes to multifamily investing, right? Mm -hmm. So when we started, it was all single family. So we weren't really familiar with some of these things. Um, and we only started in our backyard, right? Right. So when it comes to, especially large multifamily investing, there are a number of metrics for passive investors that you want to understand and be able to analyze. Uh, but you know, really when it comes down to these, um, some of these metrics, some of them are more important than others, right? Some of them hold more weight, really. Sure. Better way to put it. Yeah. So when you're identifying these metrics for investing in these large multifamily deals, it, we find it best to like, kind of like break it down in, Basic categories of order of importance, right? Mm -hmm. So, really, we find it three ways, uh, especially in these syndication deals. What are the what are the most important uh, categories? So, one, sponsor specific details. It's gonna be the that's gonna be the the most important, really. The one after that, the next one is gonna be uh, the market specific, and the one after that is the deal. And I know this is kind of counterintuitive, right? Because you think, well, the deal is probably the most important. Well, really. Especially in these syndication deals, the most important part of this is the people who are doing the deal. Because as passive investors, you and me, right? Mm -hmm. We're just basically help funding this deal. We're relying on them to execute that yeah. business plan. They need it. They're the ones going to execute the business plan. So they are the most important piece. Because right. they're the ones going to have to build the relationships. They're the ones going to be able to you know, have the connections. And they've done this before. Well, they should have done this before if you're investing them, right? So, I mean, they have the potential to turn a, a, a mediocre deal into something amazing, 
But then on the the counterpoint to that is you could have an amazing deal and a sponsor that's not great and it could, you know, be a giant headache. So right. it centers around the, uh, the, the skills and the qualifications of the sponsor that you're choosing. Right. Now, with that being said, though, uh, we're saying, you know, the sponsor is, is the most important out of all these. That being said, they're all important. I mean, they all have... You have own. to weigh all of them together. Right. But, right. So, but <clears throat> we feel that knowing the sponsor and their track record is critical when you're making these investments. So, let's just, let's just start there with the, the operator-specific metrics. So, when you're looking to invest in large multifamily properties, really, uh, it's best to start evaluating the operator of the deal. So, that's where you want to start, right? Before you even start looking at deals or before you start considering looking at deals, you want to be able to vet and understand who you're going to be doing business with, right? And really just kind of go over what they do. The operator is basically, they're the team that controls all of the activity in regards to that investment, right? Mm -hmm. They're the ones, they're the ones who go out there and do everything. They, you know, they have the experience, they have a team put in place, and all this is critical to the success of the project, right? So ideally, when you're looking at a sponsor, uh, they've done a, a number of deals like we spoke about earlier. You know, dozens potentially, hopefully have done, you know, a handful of deals at least, right? And therefore, they have the experience and they've seen the issues that arise during, you know, the beginning, the middle, and the end of these deals, right? You know, they, they've, seen, they've seen it all, so they know, they basically know what's coming or what potentially could be coming and how to mitigate those risks. So, right. you know, they'll have, and these... These experienced operators, one of the main things too is you got to understand is they've spent a lot of time building these connections, right? And a lot of those strong contacts, those strong connections they've built are with brokers, lenders, property managers. And, you know, these are some of those third party uh, people that you really got to have strong connections with. You can't just walk in and expect to get the attention of, you know, these lenders and these brokers, it doesn't work that way, right? These people have built the relationships, right? And on top of that, they actually have a team put in place, <clears throat> their personal team for their company, right? To do these deals because, they, you know, they've done a number of deals before. So they have these these pieces built and, you know, some of those pieces include like an acquisition lead, uh, asset manager, or just somebody who's over the investor relations so, you know, you're going to have a guy who's some of the capital raising and, you know, deal with the investors, people right. like you and me, right? So as a passive investor, what you want to do is you want to, you want to ask for the track records of all these people. You want to understand, you know, hey, what have you done in the past? You know, tell me about, you know, a deal that's gone sour. What did you do to overcome that? There's a lot of different things, you know, to find out about their track record. And really, you can go even, you can do a little bit deeper than that and you can actually go pull background checks on all these individuals. There's a couple of different ways or a couple of resources you can use to pull background checks on these. Uh, there is a fee, but, uh, you know, just one of those things. So, you know, but really with all this, there are, there are a number of experienced reputable syndication syndicators out there, right? I mean, right. we, we've talked, we've spoken to a number of them. Uh, but the thing is you want to find one that really fits your style. So really, because cause they're not always going to fit your style. Everybody's different, right? And, you know, you have a different style than I do, Chris. So mm -hmm. uh, it's just whoever fits your style, that's what you want to do. So first you want to learn, like we talked about this before, first you will want to learn about their track record. So what does that mean and what does it consist of? Really, how long have they been investing in real estate? What type of real estate deals have they done in the past? What type of real estate deals are they currently focusing on? Um, you know, another one that I like to really – Ask them about is like the markets they're focusing on, right? Because or the markets they have invested in, and if they're still investing in those markets, or basically if they're transitioning to other markets, and for what reason, right? And another thing to understand is, did you go through the last recession? I mean, obviously where we are right now, there's crazy stuff happening, but did you go through the last one in 2008? You know, were they a part of that cycle, whatever? You know, and then also tell me about the deals that you've done from start to end. Because, you know, they might be in the middle of a couple of deals, but maybe they've never completed a full deal. Right. You know, so these syndications go, what, three to seven years, maybe? Three maybe, to ten years? Maybe longer, yeah. Right. So you need, to, you need to understand some of these questions. And then after you ask those kind of initial, general, broad questions, you can dive deeper. Have you ever lost some money on a deal? If so, what happened and how did you handle it? Uh, for the deals that you have pushed across the finish line, how close were your initial projections to the actual outcome of those projections? And I think it's a big one because as a passive investor – you need to be tracking 
you need to know what the initial projections were and then tracking what the actual uh, distributions were in in regards to what they projected, right? You want to see if that falls in line. So this these are it's something to pay attention to for sure. You want to be looking at this. Um, another thing you want to be asking the sponsor is what are some of the challenges you're facing right now in some of the the other projects that you have going on? Because you know you'll find a lot of these sponsors they're going to have one more than one deal going. On. Not all of them, right? But you find some of the really good ones. They might have more than one deal going on, right? So yeah. talk about what the deals they have going on, what kind of challenges they're facing, and see where the, the, the pain points are, really. Another one asks is uh, if, if, they're work, if they're using a third-party property management or they have, they're very vertically integrated and have in-house property management. So you know, that's going to save – that potentially saves some money and maybe some headaches because you know, there's di- people have different things to say about different property managers and – you know how things are done so it's it's just one of those things to pay attention to and the last one of the not the last thing but the last thing i'm gonna talk about here is really want to ask them if they can provide references uh to other investors that that have invested in their deals right you want to be able to go and talk to people who've invested in their deals before and hear what this, their responses are because they're going to be able to provide you with a lot of good information right they're going to be able to tell you like hey this is how it was this is what you can expect you know and if this is your style you might want to move on right so so these are just some of the topics you want to cover with that deal sponsor. Uh, basically, it's just going to help you paint a picture of what the, how the operator basically operates and then what you expect when you, if you were to invest in a deal with them. Right. No. So arguably, the most important part of your investment is that sponsor. This is the person or the team that you're relying on. This is the person or team that you're betting on, you know, that's going to that's gonna use your capital to efficiently execute the business plan and provide those expected returns and, and exceed those expected returns really uh, you know another thing you can do is pull a couple titles from the random companies uh, that the uh, uh, pull a couple titles from the random properties that these companies or these sponsors claim to own you know this is just kind of confirm or and verify to you as the investor you know whether uh, whether or not what they're telling you is actually lining up uh, unless it isn't which uh, in that case, you know, is very important information to receive, you know, because sometimes the best deals are the ones that you don't make. Absolutely. So like Danny said, you know, <clears throat> you're welcome to run the background checks on your potential sponsor. But before you do, I would have a conversation with that person or with that sponsor uh, about their background and the scope and, and let them know that that's what you're planning on doing. Is not only not only is it important for you to inform them on what you plan on doing, but that would be the perfect opportunity for them to really shed some light on on their history and you know and have a really a moment to explain away you know something that might come up in that background check. You know, things happen and in the world of real estate, lawsuits are extremely commonplace. So having an understanding about about what is and what is not normal uh, to be brought into litigation, uh, it's going to be extremely helpful. So do your homework during the due diligence phase of your process. You know, it that's probably the best way for you to end up. Uh, that's the best way for you to avoid ending up in court. So do your homework and just let them know what you're doing. Absolutely. And, and like I said, before we move on, the sponsor. Focus on the sponsor. Once you get that sponsor, you can move on to the next part. And so, like we said at the beginning of the show. The next part is going to be market metrics, right? So these are the type. This is the market you're going to invest in, and, and you know, just like the sponsor is the most important part. Well, the market's going to play wherever that real estate is. It's going to play a huge role in the life of a real estate investor. Mm-hmm. It's 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 you know, if, if if you weren't if you weren't, let's say you weren't investing in a syndication, right? You're doing a deal by yourself, just a single family home, right? Okay. That market is so important. It's it you have you have to know your market right. So investing in the right market could lead to a long and successful career in real estate investing. Right, we know this. Right, we've seen other people do it. They say the same stuff, but investing in maybe like a less favorable favorable market that could be detrimental to your portfolio. Well, it's risky. It's just one of those things, right? So obviously, all markets go through cycles. So it's good to be aware of the metrics to look for uh, when you're investing in a market. So first. I basically, so if you're starting off, you really want to understand, say, you don't know where you want to invest at all, right? First, what I would say to do is look at some of the demographic trends, right? Where are people moving to? Why are they moving there? You know, um, there's going to be, there could potentially be a, a whole bunch of reasons, right? But uh, what we're seeing now is maybe it's due to affordability, right? Because mm-hmm. that's a big thing. People got, I mean, you got to pay for where you're living. So if the costs are crazy high, then 
it's a good reason to to leave, right? Right. Right. Another one may be due to taxes or maybe to affordability and taxes, both, right? You never know. It depends right. it depends on what's going on uh, in that market. So really all it does, all you have to do to find out this information is a quick Google search for demograph- demographic trends, right? And, and a whole bunch of stuff's going to come out. So right now, what we're seeing is a lot of people are basically flocking south, yep. right? Especially in states like Florida, Texas, you see their population numbers going up. Yep. Right. So, and what we're seeing and what, you know, other reports we've read, um, stuff we've seen, it's, it's most likely due basically to the affordability in those states and the, fa- and the favorable tax climate, uh, considering neither of those states, Texas or Florida, uh, impose a state income tax. So these are, these are huge advantages for people who are actually living there. Right. Yep. So some of the other key metrics that you actually want to look into beyond just, you know, just the, just the demographic or just those things that we just touched on are population growth, Job growth. You want to look at jobs, right? Unemployment numbers, stuff like that. These mm-hmm. are, are going to be huge. If if you have a high un- unemployment number and it's trending up, that's a bad sign, right? Yep. And you also want to look for job diversity. So you don't want one market dominated by one industry. You want to have a diverse, um, diverse client or a diverse array of basically uh, industries in in that market. Uh, another one is you want to look for median incomes. Make sure they've hit a certain point. Uh, vacancy rates. You don't want to uh, invest in a high vacancy rate. Uh, area and there's ways to look at some of these things and some of these these uh, these metrics really neighborhood to neighborhood not just city or state you know you can right. really dive deep in some of these things uh, another one's vacancy rates rental rates um, crime and then whether that state is uh, landlord or tenant friendly you know some of them are right in the middle some of them more landlord some of them more tenant friendly so it's important to know these things when you're investing in real estate because um, things do happen and you want to know uh basically ways to kind of safeguard your investment. Obviously you can't always safeguard it, but these are, these are different things to look at to know you're investing in the right market. So we have, we have, we have some, uh, we have some um, links we're going to include in the show notes where you can find uh, some of this information, but uh, just make sure you choose markets that you believe will provide a favorable landscape for your long-term investments, right? Or just whatever really investment you're doing. You want to be able to find those markets they're going to align with those interests. So align yourself, and when it comes to apartment syndication, align yourself with operators who are investing in those areas and the markets you believe in. So right, and you know, for the population growth, you know, I, I would take note of uh, of you know if the growth is actually projected to be negative, you know that co- that alone could be a, a strong indicator that the market might not be able to support the outcome that you're trying to achieve. You know, uh, take note of the the job growth and the diversity of employment as well. Uh, you know, it's it's usually better to participate in those markets that have a well diversified uh, employment and you know high job growth. The last thing you need as an investor is to have your the majority of your uh, the majority of the employment uh, you know relying heavily on one sector. You know if that if that market takes a turn and that particular segment sector takes a hit, you know that's going to mean a large portion of your tenants are going to be directly affected at the exact same time. That could be awful for your investment. So with that being said, the median income is important as well. You know, you want to make sure that the local economy can actually afford to live in the community that you're trying to invest in. You know, so if the average income is insufficient to support your project, maybe you got to look somewhere else. Uh, for the vacancy rates and the rental rates, you know, you want to understand the demand and, and the average, you know, for living in a particular city or a zip code or in a neighborhood community. You know, take and make an attempt to uh, to understand the absorption rate and whether or not the a demand is even being met, or if there's a demand at all. You know, and you mentioned a little bit ago crime. This is a huge metric huge. when considering it. Uh, you know, investing in a particular market, a higher crime rate is uh, going to be a nightmare to deal with, and it brings a lot higher risk. You know, so we like to invest in lower crime rate areas. It's just one thing that we don't want to deal with on a day-to-day basis. Uh, you know, it's, I mean, you, there's a, a whole gamut of reasons why that's true. <laughs> uh, so we just stick away from that. We want to help build, uh, you know, those, those up and coming communities and just leave the crime stuff away or leave, stay away from the crime stuff. And, uh, and you did mention, you know, the, the landlord, uh, uh, you know, the, whether or not it, it's favorable for a landlord, uh, versus a tenant, you know, right. and, and really, you know, we like to invest in those markets that favor the landlords more so than the tenants, you know, so that makes a rental property owner easier. It, it, it makes owning a rental property easier in some States over the others, you know, the legal landscape is just all the more friendly. So, 
Right. It, the the importance of understanding the market you're investing in is is critical. I mean, you want to know you want to know the ins and outs of the market, and as much as you can, really. Obviously, you can't know everything, but uh, for the most part, know as much as you can. Do your homework when it comes to the markets and invest accordingly. Right. So, mm-hmm. all right. So, moving in to to the next item of business, uh, the deal specific metrics. Right. So, really, when, what you want to do for the deal is you want to focus on um, obviously a, a Q a few key aspects, right? So basically like deal structure, financial projections. This is this is for a syndication, right? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna drive this toward a, a syndication, right? Mm-hmm. This is a lot of this information for. So deal structure, financial projections, scope of work, the business plan really, and then the risks so, uh, associated with this project, right? So these are some of the things that you really want to pay attention to. And as a past investor, when you're presented with a deal, you want to look over the executive summary, right? Straight away, right? I mean, that's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to get first. Right. You're going to get. You're going to get an email, and it's going to have some stuff in there, and it's basically going to have uh, a link to go look at the executive summary, and then potentially sign up for a webinar, right? So first, take a look at how the deal is structured between the operator and the passive investors. Mm-hmm. Note the projected returns and the holding period for the project. So you know they're not the same for every deal. Yep. So be aware of that, right? So after you look at the returns and basically like the uh, the hold period for for the project or what the what they project that to be, next you want to look at uh, the type of asset that they're going to be investing in or what the deal is, right? Is this a single or multi property investment? Um, is this a fund type portfolio uh, where the capital can be spread basically across multiple properties in multiple markets, right? As the opportunity arises, or is it just kind of you know this is one deal we have this one apartment complex in this one market this is what all this is going to so there's there's a couple of different things right so you need to be paying attention to what those are and what you're investing in uh, another one is is this a value add or a turnkey project you know we're going in we're doing these sort of upgrades and stuff like that because uh, it changes kind of um, how the the business plan really it's gonna yep. it's gonna affect that quite a bit another one is is the apartment community in uh, class A um, a B or C uh, area, right? Or is 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 the actual property itself class A, uh, B or C property, right? So these these are certain things. And like Chris was talking about earlier with the crime, say if you go into a D class property, right? I mean that's going to be you might be talking about going somewhere in the hood, and you know, do you want to invest in the hood? Because there's going to be issues with that, right? I mean, high risk has high return, but high risk is high risk, right? And then you need if if you're gonna if you're gonna invest in something like that, you need to be making sure you're partnering with somebody who has done this many times successfully. Yeah, I would leave the Class D stuff to uh, seasoned sponsors. They're, yeah. they're the guys who are well-equipped to tackle those issues as they rise. Absolutely. Because they will. Right. So after you determine the type of asset the basically the deal is going to be, you want to become familiar with the actual business plan itself and the numbers that are, they're going to be you know associated with that business plan. So really... Um, a couple of things you want to look at is, uh, you know, if this is a value add project, what improvements are going to be made, right? Mm-hmm. And then how much money is needed to make those improvements? Because, you know, you need to look at the deal and see, realize, oh, I was going to take so much of this per door or whatever, you know, just through the life of the project and, you know, whether it's per door and then include some of the, the other costs like parking lots or, you know, whatever you need to, you need to understand what these are going to be. Uh, another one you want to pay attention to, or what are the current rents of the property? What are the rents of the property? currently that they're getting, you know, can, can they be raised? Um, you know, and then we'll also, cause you want to compare that to the market rents. So another question is what are the market rents, mm-hmm. right? What are the market rents being obtained, uh, for similar properties in that area? And then, you know, typically the executive summary, they're going to provide these numbers, right? But, uh, you know, if you want to take one step further, you can do your own research and just look for similar properties in that area. And then just check and see what the rents are, right? And then you can kind of do your own homework, right? A little, a little bit of your own due diligence, which we highly recommend you should do, yeah, right? for sure. Just um, trust but verify. Uh, absolutely, I couldn't have said it any better than that. So, another one is, is like I said before, uh, verify the hold period. You want to know what it's going to be. Uh, determine what the exit strategy is for the property. Are they going to hold it forever? Um, are they going to do a cash out refi? W- what's the plan here? There should always be an exit strategy, mm-hmm. potentially more than one. Sure. But you want to make sure you have uh, an exit strategy for sure. So make sure these questions and, you know, these and other questions, the projections, stuff like this for, the, for this investment, they're basically going to help you um, understand what to expect of the deal. You know, how it's going to be played out through the life of the deal from the beginning, the middle, and the end. So make sure you understand these things and how they're um, basically associated, associated with that investment, right? 
So next, you want to understand uh, a little bit more some of the risks and how the operator plans to mitigate those risks, right? Because mm-hmm. let's be real, things happen. Yep. There's always risk. Yep. Doesn't matter what you're investing. There's always going to be a risk. So uh, one of the things that, you know you want to focus on when you're talking doing your due diligence with uh, these investors is uh, understanding what ty- what like adjustments they put in uh, for conservative underwriting. How conservative is their underwriting, right? And then some of the things you might see is you might see some of these operators imp- implementing a, a higher exit cap rate, which is basically saying that the property's value is going to be less when when you exit it, right? So that's it, it's just a good way to put in um, a buffer, right? Really, you know. So just just in case type thing. And if the numbers still work with that uh, at the high, then this is a good sign. Yep. So just under kind of understanding some of those numbers there. Another one is is the current uh, site manager remaining in place, like the property manager, or just somebody who's going to be on site. Are they, it's the same one? Um, is it the same? Is it the same property manager? Or are you going to be replacing them when we take over when we get this under management, right? Uh, how much does that manager make? You know, is it is it in line with you know how much other managers are making in that area, or other property managers are making in that area? You understand these things. These are good questions to ask. I think it's important to note just even on that to <clears throat> to understand how they're getting paid. Yeah, we want to know how much they're getting paid because that's you know that goes towards the bottom line anyways. But are they getting paid a percentage? Or are they getting paid a flat rate fee? And if people are if people are getting paid, you know, more so a flat rate fee, there might be times where they might be less inclined to be more efficient at their job or to push harder and to to really help achieve, uh, you know, those uh, help achieve and and exceed, you know, the the profits that we're that we're looking for, you know, it, that that puts skin in the game if they're getting paid off of a percentage because now they're incentivized to kind of help out. And that kind of goes towards, you know, uh, these sponsors having their team and the vertical integration. You know, there's no real reason to, if we go into a value add uh, investment, there's no real reason to keep the on-site, the on-site managers and stuff. You know, if, if that's where some inefficiencies lie, it doesn't make sense for us to invest in this property and keep the same people who are running it. No, we're going to instill our own people. We have we have property management companies that are ready to go and that they have skin in the game. They also invest alongside, you know, into these deals. So the when when those people have stuff or uh, have a skin in the game, you know, our interests are aligned. If someone's just getting, you know, 50, 60 grand a year or whatever to manage your property, they have they have no incentive to do anything, you know, anything more than just to not get fired. So I think it's Something to look at. That's a great point. Great point. All right. So next thing you want to pay attention is what kind of cash reserves are they going to have in place? Uh, you want to know, you know, you can have this figure and basically you see the operator. They could potentially put it in uh, as a per unit measure uh, of the operating budget. It's kind of like, oh, you know, we're going to have so much per per door really mm-hmm. of cash reserves. Or you might see as a percentage of the purchase price really. Sure. So you might see it one or the other. It depends on the operator. Uh, but be on the lookout for that. Another one is what type of uh, stress tests have you done um, to basically simulate worst case scenarios? You know, you want you know you want to see what the lowest rents can be, uh, basically, and still cover all the expenses. So, has this stress test been done? What's what's the break even occupancy? Um, ba- basically, what we're saying is how many units can be vacant and still be able to cover all the expenses, right? Mm-hmm. These are, these are just some of the things you want to pay attention to. So, ha- ask them. Have they done this stress test and, and basically like seen if, you know, what the worst case scenario is and what that looks like. So, right. No, you, you bring up some great points, you know, and, and just talking about this, the sensitivity, you know, analysis and how the investment, you know, could react to different scenarios. You know, at this point, you're just trying to understand the scale of the project and understand, you know, what a possible worst case scenario would be, you know, and, and if the, like he was saying just a minute ago, you know, if, if the numbers are still lining up, even at these worst case scenarios, you know, then you sound like it sounds like you got a good deal here. You know, we look back at the relative, you know, recent history of the property, the T12, the trailing three, you know, to really understand what's been going on and where inefficiencies and efficiencies might actually be. So, you know, I think I think a handful of the uh, the more important metrics to measure uh, at that point are like you know the exit cap rate, the rental rate, the lease up rate. And the expanse increase, you know, so once you have an understanding of what's going on here, you have a good foundation and uh, and kind of a, an understanding of the conservative underwriting that went into it. 
you, if you see that that deal works in these scenarios, uh, you got a great investment on your hands. And, you know, and because that is, you know, when a season sponsor is perfectly positioned to, to execute the business plan, you know, and, and all investors get a real nice return. Absolutely. And the thing is, there, there's a lot going into this, right? And there's a lot to take into consideration, but these are some of the main considerations to take into account for these type of investments. So really, in summary, get to know your operators, your sponsors, analyze your markets, know how to analyze, analyze markets, get that down, and basically do the due diligence on the deal itself. You know, Get associated with those numbers, get familiar with them, and basically be able to run those numbers. All right. All right, Chris, we're about running out of time. I do have one question for you, though. What's that? All right, so... You know, we've been in this for a little bit, whatever, and you know, you've had a long career doing a number of things, right? What would you say is one of the most valuable lessons that you've learned in your career so far? Uh, well, in my in my career as um, as uh, in just in did in just dealing with real estate, it's about consistency. In everything that we're doing in real estate, we don't get paid today. I don't get paid every two weeks. I get paid when something closes, and Basically, like I'm always, you know, thirty or forty-five days away from a paycheck potentially. So when you, when you slow down, take your foot off the gas, you're not, you're not going to see that today, but you're going to see that in a month. And so it's, it's important just to keep pushing, be consistent, do something every day that's going to help you out, um, and, and your life is going to be better for it. I mean, that's it. If you if you let off the gas, you're going to be hurting you know, in 30, 60, 90 days when things slow down. So just stay on top of it. That I, I don't even know what more to add. You just stay on top of it or it's going to suck. Be consistent. Do stuff day in and day out every day. As long as you're pushing towards that goal, you need to be accomplishing something every day. At least pushing, doing something, at least one thing every day. So yep. I, I totally agree with that. And as soon as you break that, as soon as you break that chain, who knows how many more times you're going to break that chain. So. Yep. Keep it going as long as you can. All right, Chris, we'll, uh, we're about out of time. You got anything else for the show? No, I'm good here. All right, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll see you next week. Later. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. Head over to iTunes to subscribe to the show. And while you're there, we really appreciate you leaving a rating and written review. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to hear on the show, connect with us on social media or through our website at twosmartassets.com. We look forward to speaking to each and every one of you. Talk to you soon.